Hey everybody, before we get into this episode, I just want to give you a bit of an update. Your boy is coming back to Thailand. I'll be in Chiang Mai in July. We'll be having a IRL smoke sesh, so keep your eyes peeled and I hope to see a bunch of you there. Now enjoy the episode. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Siam Smoke Sessions. Today we have another special guest, someone I've been following on Instagram for a while for their very interesting reviews of cannabis and strains in thailand so i have terp hunter here on the podcast how you doing man hey man what's good thanks for having me thank you for coming on man it's a pleasure to have you on i've been a big fan of all the reviews you do and like you're one of the people i know is always around when stuff's going off so i know you're a kind of a ground floor player in the scene (laughs) no no not really i'm more of just like your regular stoner <laughs> and you know just i uh, i've met a lot of people in the cannabis seniors since it become since it uh it's legalized so when when there's like an event somewhere i just try to go if i'm free it's it's still cool that you do and there's a i think a lot of people at least appreciate seeing content coming out of these events that you do i do anyway so <laughs> oh thanks man you're welcome. So, I guess the first question really would be: Is what, what was your first experience with cannabis? Oh, first experience. Uh, can you remember? It's like uh, probably way, way back when I was in college or high school. I can't remember, but it was not because I was like I, I was my place was like I was in uh, what do you call this boarding school, oh, okay. basically. And yeah, they were really strict there. There were drugs there, I know there were some of them, there was cannabis there too, but I just tried from some of my friends, but that was about it. It was not really like, you know, it was just cool to try, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, boarding school is a yeah. very different lifestyle than most of you used to. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. when was it that you really got into it? Was it later in life, I imagine? Yeah, really late in life, man. That, like, I, I was really working. That, that's when I, you know, I was really working, yeah. Here in, here in Thailand, though. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. I guess it's when legalization happened, you were kind of excited then. Oh, man. I was like, because I've been following the news, and, you know, and first it, it was, like, legalized for uh, medicinal purposes or something like that, yeah. where you would have to have, like, a, a card. But that was, like, I didn't even know where to get the card, so, you know. But... Little by little, I kept seeing, like, uh, from the underground, the, the growers, you know, the contacts that I had, and they were starting to offer, you know, they were, like, coming out a bit, even though it was not, like, 100% legal yet, but mm, you could yeah. kind of feel it, you know. Yeah, I, th- I think a lot of people could definitely feel it coming, especially, like, the couple of months before, there was already a few shop fronts that weren't open, but it made you wonder what was going to happen. <laughs> I know, man. It's like on the day because uh, I remember when the I can't forget the day, June nine, yeah, the ninth of June, and the day that they legalized, I went the first shop because that's the only shop that I knew that was going to open was uh, Sukumweed. Mm, yeah, yeah, I went there just for you know I can say that <laughs> yeah, like on the first day I got my first. Uh, I think it was an eighth. I bought an eighth from there. Awesome. So you were definitely yeah. a day one then. That's cool. <laughs> Just for, you know, posterity purposes. <laughs> Completely understand. So, so what's been some of, like, your favorite things that have been going off in Thailand? I mean, it's been a very kind of a free market. Like, there's not been... I mean, there is a few regulations and stuff, but a, there's a lot going on. Oh, yeah. Uh... What I like about what's happening now is, you know, because people are kind of free to grow their own stuff, and you can see all these growers that you would probably have never met if it was not uh, legalized like this. And there's just a lot of really good growers here. And, and you know, it's fun to, like, get to meet them and, and talk to them. Cause these guys are really passionate about what they do. But at the same time, uh, there's also some, a lot, probably a lot of unsavory individuals, let's say, that, you know, are taking advantage of the situation. 
yeah. like this, and especially with the uh, the wheat that's coming up, that's imported. And I don't even know if that's legal because I, I I've been reading on the news to like you know say no to uh, illegal illegally imported weed. So my thoughts, but so there's like legally imported weed. I, I didn't even know that. So. Yeah, it's, yeah, it seems yes. to be very complicated. I, I know there is technically legal imported, but I think it's like a very, very, very few handful amount of people. I, I think like, oh, uh, like I it's, didn't know that. it's pretty hard to get the uh, kind of regulations to import. But sadly, there's a lot of people that are, you know, doing it anyway. And I think that's it's probably going to happen for a while. But uh, yeah, like you said in the news, a lot of people are talking about it lately. There was um, an Asia Now post this morning, I believe it was, talking about um, people believe that Americans are eating, uh, basically taking a lot of money out of Thailand because of this import, which is kind of sad to see because I don't want that to happen because Thailand, to me, what's incredible to me, Thailand compared to like America and Amsterdam is like getting to know the growers. I've never like been to a country that's legalized where you know, you can go into a dispensary and actually meet the people who I know. are in the weed. That's <laughs> so cool to me. Like, yeah. Like, I and I know you've, like, met Canis and stuff like that. Like, that group of people, yeah. and the Ganjana Cup, they're doing some really cool stuff. And the fact that they, like, interact with the people is something I really like. Yeah, for real, man. I mean, uh, a few weeks ago, I uh, high out uh, dispensary opened. They invited me there in you know, I got to meet these guys are so all down to earth, man. I tried their their weed for like for so long, and you know, I kind of like they're like the superstars in the game. But once you meet them, they I got to tour the grow facility. They're so welcoming and so yeah, it's a really cool uh, little community. And I really hope that you know it just blossoms into something bigger, like each grower, like you know, trying to help each other. Definitely, I think Thailand like has a big, big opportunity with creating their own brands and groups. Like, look how co- massive Cookies is now around the world. Like, all, I know. all we have to do is put that energy into like a Thai grower, and then they could be a brand. You know, I what I'm excited for is you know when Thailand can ex- export as well. That would be pretty interesting to kind of yeah. show, show Thai cannabis to the world. Yeah, man, for real, because like. Um Lots of really, really good growers here. So the I, I would only think the main reason for uh, other people buying the imported stuff is probably just because of the price. Yeah. It's yeah. probably just a lot yeah, cheaper because the Thai growers are really, really good growers here, man. And, you know, just get blown away like every drop. And you know, especially now it's, uh, some people sending stuff to me to test and all this is just like, it's mind-blowing. And like the quality over here is like, it's really really good yeah I, I think in like a year prices would definitely kind of plateau to a more regulated price especially with yeah. like the election coming up and stuff every, every kind of part of the government wants to work out how to get their own kind of slice of the pie as well so yeah man. so yeah this is really and the future hopefully you know i think it also come with having to have like the proper regulations in place and not not just you know not just like there'd be a law there'd be also somebody that's really actually gonna do something about the law and not just you know get bypassing every time if person has good connections or what so yeah uh, once probably the regulations get in place they, they would it would how do you say it? it I think the growth would increase more in terms of like you know getting the word out about Thai cannabis culture and all that. And just improvement of the quality and everybody can you know, okay. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. So on the topic of like this, um, what do you look for in weed? You know, when I know that you do reviews and a lot of people send you stuff, what is it that you like look for in what you would define like good cannabis? Oh, uh, for me, it's just, I, I think first would be just the complexity of that. Uh, terpene profile because i people ask me like you know what kind of terps or flavors or smells do i kind of look for i can't really put a finger on that it's just like i like to try different 
types of cannabis, different types of herbs, and, you know. And I test them all in different uh, temperatures from the lower to middle temps to high temps just to, like, you know, uh, enjoy, like, the whole... I mean, that, this is how I do it. I just love doing it. Even before I was doing these reviews, that's what I do at home. And, yeah, so I just started it just, you know, just like a, uh, a little page just to show Thai cannabis culture. And from there, you know, the people just started adding and and they would ask me if I could review there. I'm just, I'll tell them straight up that I would, but uh, if it's not like, you know, it's not really good or I don't really like it, I'm not going to make a review. So I just don't want to make like a review that would uh, kind of, I just want to focus on like the good mm. kind of bits, good parts out here. Yeah, that's good. I like that you kind of don't have a bias and you just you just showcase what you definitely think is good. That's a good way to do yeah. it. And uh, with your reviews as well, I really do like that you do the di- different temperatures and stuff because it's interesting to me and like how different people smoke and stuff. And like you doing that kind of helps a lot of different people and how they smoke. And it kind of um, showcases the strain on a more broader profile. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean... The- it's, it's really one of the ways to uh, try to check like the quality of the buds. It's like there are really this really good ones, females that come out when from low to medium to high temps, and you can really taste and smell like the different terpenes. And some are just just you know like, they're all right, but it's not as complex as that. And for me, I enjoy like having their levels to the uh, smells and the flavors, terpenes. Yeah. Most definitely. I think t- too many people, uh, especially back in the day, would focus more on the THC content and yeah. stuff instead of the terpenes. And it's, it's nice that there is more of this focus on the terpenes and what, like, interesting quality cannabis there is. Yeah, I mean, and also not just, not just, you know, not just, like, for uh, the smell or the flavors, but, it's also a big part of the uh, what do you call this the entourage effect. Yes. Uh, yep. you know, yeah, it's backed by science that you know this ter- each different type of terpene have their uh, effects on the body, and coupled with the THC and you know all these all these uh, cannabinoids in the plant would greatly benefit the person, not just the THC itself. Yeah, and I think that's something also the medical side of Thailand should kind of focus on as well, because that will also kind of benefit not only keeping cannabis legalized, but it also helps spread information, you know, about like certain strains and their effects on different people, because there are people that like want to take cannabis for medical reasons, but don't like it for certain reasons. And maybe it's because they have had the wrong strain or, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean that that that's a part that uh, it's kind of difficult to suggest uh, cannabis as like as like something to heal a certain ailment or whatever. It's because like each bud, each flower differs from you know. So you can't really say that okay. Uh, I'll give you this much and that, and it will depend on the person's tolerance and everything. And, you know, and it's kind of, you know, it's like a different effect on each different person. So, yeah, that would be difficult if it would need some trial and error, especially for the person that who wants to try it for medicinal purposes, then there would be some sort of trial and error there. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, but, Another question, though, just to be, I guess, more biased, though. What if, what if, say, the top three strains that you've reviewed so far? If you can... Top think- three. Um, yeah. One would be uh, Monkey Berries by Kenneth. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard a lot yeah, of good stuff about the Monkey Berries. Monkey Berries by Kenneth. And uh, next one would be, I think, Emergency. Mm, yes. Yeah, emergency. But it's more of like a daytime stream, but the terpene profile is really good. 
and and I was really surprised with uh, well, this one that recently I just tried. Uh, it's from this grower from Chiang Mai. Mm-hmm. I tried his uh, grape stang. Wow, it's like I've tried lots of great grape stang. I think this was the best so far. Terpenes were just like I don't know, man. It's hard to explain. <laughs> I, I always tell people I wish that I could have smell vision for people because we can talk about weed all we want, but it's so hard to explain <laughs> I it properly. I, I, always, uh, I don't know if you've ever watched Futurama, but there was the telescope where you put your nose in it so you can smell space, and I just wish that that was a thing but for weed. Just... <laughs> <laughs> It'd be so much easier to do reviews and stuff if you could just be like, this is also how yeah. it smells like. <laughs> yeah. And the one thing with reviews too is like, uh, uh, it's one thing that probably I would want to educate people is like, you know, what I'm reviewing and what I'm, you know, describing might not be the same for their experience. Mm. Because they might get their butt from another grower or from another crop. Even it's like the same strain, probably different phenotype, different growing, uh, just growing situations, you know. So, uh, I just I was just thinking that you know maybe we would expect that, uh, hey, he said this strain was going to do this, but I don't know feel stuff. So, I think there needs to be more education too in yeah, for the public. Yeah, most definitely. I think uh, some of the public can get a bit swayed by like hype and stuff instead of kind of yeah. exploring what they like themselves. I, I spoke about it on the past yeah. on the podcast where there was an era where everyone kind of seemed like they were just stuck on smoking just gelato and stuff. And mm. those kind of that kind of makes me sad because there's so much of a weed out there to try and explore. And that's the interesting part to me. I wouldn't want to have the same thing every day. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things I'm really thankful for is because, you know, because the Thai cannabis community, they're very welcoming and, you know, I've met a lot of them and just got to talk to them and they would readily share their, you know, their knowledge. Mm. And it's just like really, really nice community and I hope it just continues and grows even more because... Uh, it really got a good thing going here. Most definitely. And like you said, they're so welcoming. I don't think I've actually had any grower or a bud tender or even anyone like in the scene turn away a question when I've asked them. It's always been kind of nice that everyone's kind of open to share, like especially Canis when he was on the podcast. I've never met a man so humble and open to talk mm. about how he does things and pump as well from bud tender, Patea. Mm. Like, I love the kind of community that's going on. I mean, there's, again, there is some unsavory characters, sadly, but I think yeah. the most important people are the ones, like, actually doing stuff, not just for themselves, but for the community. Yeah, and you said it perfectly, man. It's just like, you know, there's going to always gonna be some, like, bad actors, and let's just not focus on that, you know? Just focus on the good and trying to, like, empower each other and, you know, Whatever it is you do that you can contribute to the uh, cannabis community, it doesn't have to be. You don't have to be like a grower or a viewer or what. Just by you know, maybe you could educate your family or just start from there. Start from the people around you, and if if more people would do that, then I think uh, this would really become a very robust community. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. What 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 are some things that you do hope for though in the future regarding cannabis in Thailand? I think uh, my main thing would be uh, first to like you know uh, some regulations. Mm. Yeah, I, now I, I I can say what, but uh, just some form of regulations where the growers and the farms are you know are protected. Yeah. And they will not be, uh, what's the term? They will not be used by uh, the middleman or investors or whatever. Just, you know, that just right at the top of my head, that, that would, that's the first thing I, I, I would think of. Definitely. I, th- I think a lot of people turn their nose up at the word regulation, thinking it means, like, bad things. But in a lot of senses, especially 
with a topic like this. Regulation is important in some senses. Like I talk about, um, I think Thailand should implement some sort of seed to sale kind of program so people can actually know where their cannabis is coming from, like yeah. the dates and stuff. Like if you go to yeah. America, you know, they've got the dates, a lot of big mm. companies that dates it was packaged, dates it was trimmed, mm. cannabinoid levels, mm. percentages. And I think mm. that will be something quite beneficial for Thailand. Yeah. Yeah, you know, for real, man. Because, like, you know, a lot of people think that regulations would just, uh, more regulations in terms of, like, protecting your product, protecting the farmers, mm. you know, protecting the Thai farmers. And th- I think that would be, like, if, if that happens, then many people would, would continue to pursue uh, doing and growing good cannabis, you know. And, yeah, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And as as well with like regulation stuff, what's your thoughts on extracts? If that ev- and stuff, if that ever becomes like allowed, is that something you're gonna get into as well to review? Uh, I've always wanted to try, but I don't want to start trying. And just all the people I know that have started extracts and I've never looked back. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I, 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 I still want to enjoy flower. That's the reason why I've never moved on to extracts or just so probably in the future i'll still be smoking flour i think for a very long time yeah i'm I'm the same there's a few people i know who kind of um went down the extract route and now they have empty pockets because all they want is extract yeah i know that there's a there's a very big uh, reason too i mean these this things are expensive especially if you get the good ones so yeah and but uh when since we're talking about extracts, I think if uh, you're going the medicinal route, that should be, in my opinion, should be legal because that, that would be the best way for the doctor to prescribe something for, like, say, a person who doesn't want to feel like the uh, psychoactive effects, you know? They just want the medicinal effects. And if you're not going to legalize uh, THC oil, or extracts from the plant, then it would very be, it would be very difficult for those people to get the treatment. Yeah, so, you think so? Yeah, definitely. I mean, some of the medicine already available in Thailand, it's not up to standard. I would say compared to like the rest of the world. Like, if you look at Canada with, uh, I don't, uh, do you know what RSO is? Like Rick Simpson oil and stuff. Like that high condensed THC extract is probably the best thing for medicinal and at the moment i don't believe thailand is getting that close to those kinds of medicines i mean they are working on it but you know with the kind of ban on extract as a whole it's gonna kind of push it back a little bit sadly yeah i mean that's that's really one thing too it's because you know of it's very difficult for those who have the means or who want to do it because of what the laws allowed. And, and sadly, in my opinion, that would be, especially for medicinal purposes, I think uh, extract would be the best way to go. Most definitely, 100%. So is, is there anything, I mean, you already did bring up think one thing earlier, but is there anything else that you'd want to kind of let people know? I always kind of like to share just a, a little bit of knowledge just for people to be a bit more aware of, of the scene and stuff. Like, what's some knowledge that you think maybe people aren't aware of as much? Just really good weed here. <laughs> Bottom line is just there's really, really good growers and, you know, just get to know them. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you go to a dispensary, you could ask them, you know, they'll probably tell you or not, but if they, if they tell you, then it's probably legit. So just ask them, you know, uh, who was the girl where what farm this bud came from and but you know, I just want people to know that's really really good we here and growers here really passionate about what they do I mean just talking to them I know you've talked to some right and how they share uh, yeah. their knowledge and wisdom regarding the, they're very uh, giving so yeah it's really really great uh, cannabis community here in just hoping, you know, that 
this continues and blossoms to something bigger. Really. I definitely think it will. I definitely think it will. And I guess, uh, I guess one of my last questions is, are you going to travel more around Thailand? I know that you're more Bangkok based, but will we be seeing you uh, up north or down south anytime soon? Yeah, if there would be an event, I, I would really love to go. It's just that, you know, because I have a day job, so it will all also depend on uh, scheduling and stuff, yeah. But uh, I, I, if, like, I know for a few months ahead, then I can request those days, and I would love to travel to Phuket or Chiang Mai and see, you know, experience the cannabis scene over there, too. Awesome, man. Like, sure. I mean, I'm hopefully going to be coming back over in a few months and I want to kind of plan an event in Chiang Mai. So it'd be awesome to see you up there if you're free. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, just let us know when you're here. I will do, man. It's, 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 it's going to be exciting when I come back. I'm having to like not say a lot of things and just prepare behind the scenes, but it's going to be a, a very big and good time when I'm back. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, I'm excited right now. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I'll see you soon, man. I can't wait to be back. And but yeah, thank you. I've kind of run out of questions now, but like, thank you for coming on the show, man. It means a lot. Thanks for having me, man. And you know, uh, it, it's a pleasure to talk to you. And yeah, hopefully you could come here soon and let's enjoy something really, really good. Yeah, man. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Hi Bro uh, on IG. Yes, uh, I've met him just through the cannabis uh, cannabis community, and you know, he has introduced me to like a lot of the growers that I really admire. So, yeah, big big thank you to him. Yeah, if he's listening, <laughs> but yeah, man, thanks to him and to a lot of the growers that have been uh, really really welcoming, and you know, and I just wish them all the best and see them soon. Uh, much appreciated man and yeah shout out to hi bro he's a amazing guy oh yeah really cool and you know it's it's nice to like uh every time we talk because we're both kind of the same in in our in what we look for in cannabis you know we enjoy the looking for all these different types of terpenes and tasting that and so yeah and this, he's been really really kind so yeah so, thanks yeah. to him again so yeah, if you're listening, hi bro, big shout out to you, and also come on the podcast sometime, it'd be awesome to hear from you, man. Awesome, and uh, thank you everybody for listening, this has been uh, Siam Smoke Sessions, episode 25, have a good evening, and goodbye. <laughs>